Welcome. This is Wade. This is a special episode of Out of the Darkness. We'll be hearing a collection of thoughts written over a year ago that are more pertinent to today than ever before. Chilling things that are carrying on still and intensifying as each day goes on, but... Even as disaster looms, we can hold on to the faith and rejoice for each sign that passes by and each one that comes to fruition. We can take solace in knowing that our redemption draws near, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. From my state of Oregon, some of the most chaotic situations for our area and really for the country have become, they've been coming from the city of Portland. And I'm a few hours away from there. And the scene and everything, it's changed quite a bit since I've been living in this state. You always remember that slogan, keep Portland weird. It's usually plastered on buildings, cars, and sidewalk benches. But over time, you know, we've been witnessing the changing. Changing a demeanor in people when peace-loving quote-unquote liberals or hippies, hipsters, usually clad year-round in flannel, acid-washed jeans and beanies, they flourished in a seemingly harmless, weird environment. The scene is noticeably changing and drastically. Portland isn't the only place where we're seeing drastic changes in how society's dealing with itself. It's all over the world. Where people could at least have their epicurean philosophical debates on what is good and evil and the nature of the universe it's been replaced by thoughtless aggressive reaction to differing opinions debates or discussions on individuals differences they've devolved in the power of a sound argument one's words and knowledge they're lost it's like suddenly man has lost the ability to reason is only able to take some kind of physical reaction when coming into contact with a thought or idea contrary to theirs, almost like a like a beast or animal like. It's interesting, we know when Peter speaks of false teachers, they're likened under the beasts of the earth. Unthinking animals, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed. 
And see, it's the unique breath of life that God has given to man that really separates us from the animals either of the earth. We know when Peter speaks of false teachers, they're likened unto the beasts of the earth, unthinking animals, creatures of instinct born to be caught and destroyed. See, it's this unique breath of life that God has given to man that really separates us from the animals of the earth. Because eventually both man and beast end up the same in the end, and that is the dust of the earth. So why are humans, despite the increase in technical capability, why do we seem to be devolving into creatures of mere reaction and instinct? When reading scripture and making observations of the media, it seems like individuals are being herded into this direction by some guiding force, perhaps in hopes to cause a shift in our consciousness. And if we are diligent in reading the scriptures, we know that there are higher intelligences or higher entities, watchers, that involve themselves in the affairs of humanity. We also learn of the in ill intentions some of these beings have for us as humans, and the wars over human souls that are being waged in the realms that go beyond our normal senses. From scripture, the teachings of Jesus were always directed for one to look at the spiritual implications of the happenings on earth, from our actions and to the events of surrounding us, teaching us that the battles, trials, and temptations that come our way are not battles to be fought in the flesh, but of the spirit. This realization shouldn't be unfounded or surprising for those who have the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We can see it's all over the world, and I don't think we're noticing the chaotic nature more just because technology has increased and communication is simpler. But I do think technology and things like social media, music, television, movies, all these things in general have been used as tools to help spur on a social cognitive shift. Hollywood's just one example. With Hollywood, we automatically, or I at least, automatically associate that with a cult. It's an occult area. Areas with occult origins make perfect hunting grounds, if you will. A cult, if you want to get into the word, means things that are hidden essentially hidden in the darkness, supernatural or outside of nature, paranormal or alongside or again outside of normal. We can expand upon that. Supernaturalism, magic, black magic, witchcraft, sorcery, necromancy, wizardry, the black arts, Kabbalah, Kabbalism, Occultism, Diabolism, Devil Worship, Devilry, Voodoo, Hoodoo, White Magic, Witchery, Witching, Orinda, Mysticism. The adjectives of occult would be transcendental, secret, hidden, dark, concealed, Veiled, invisible, obscure, recondite, cryptic, arcane, abstruse, esoteric, cabalistic, inexplicable, unexplainable, unfathomable, incomprehensible, impenetrable, unrevealed, puzzling, perplexing, mystifying, mysterious, Enigmatic, hermetic, and names do mean something. Hollywood, or Holywood, or just Holly, we think of that as something we put on our doors during Christmas time, the Christmas wreath. But for ancients, it's a highly revered tree worshipped by the Druids. 
whitest of all woods, it was believed to have supernatural qualities and used for divination purposes. And eventually it made use in the form of a magic wand. You can go further back. What's the magic wand? What's the purpose of the magic wand? And the notion of the magic wand goes back to an ancient form of a magical order, the Magian lore of Zoroaster. It was a priestly class. And with these ancient class of priests, they would carry with them the sacred bundle of twigs or slender wands. It was a ritual tool and played an important part in Zoroastrian religious practices since prehistoric times. According to history, the wands are an ancient Indo-Iranian emblem seeking the holy and interesting they were used as somewhat of a conduit, establishing a connecting link between the material world and the spiritual world. The conduit through which the powers of each plane manifested their presence. This became an instrument through which one acquired sacred power, leading also to channeling that acquired power outwards, casting a spell thrusting one's own will, if you will, out into the universe to shape and mold it into the one they see fit. So you have the prototype magic wand. And yes, many different types of wood have been used to construct a magic wand. This conduit or this link between two worlds, I would argue that anything or anyone can be used as a conduit depending upon an individual's mental state. And what exactly it is they are trying to achieve. But we see through all of that, there's a point and purpose for Hollywood. It seems Hollywood's job, with its moving images, its moving pictures, is a way to more efficiently send these images into the subconscious in the minds of as many people as possible in a short amount of time as possible. We don't need a psychology degree to know that images are powerful to our psyche. Some disgust us. Some lead us to lust. Some lead us to sorrow. They invoke a powerful emotional response and some of those images whether they're simulated or right in front of us have profound psychological impacts these images root their way into our subconscious and are stored for later there's various situation cases in the bible where some of the images that were implemented by Moses, you know, the bronze serpent. They had to be broken apart and melted because the people would turn them into idols. It seems in our flawed human state, we're always looking for a tangible thing to worship. But if Hollywood is channeling or acting as a conduit, what messages what secret or occult things can be hidden in the images that are being stored upon our minds, our subconscious, to later manifest itself at a later date, some point in our lives? Something to reflect on. Going on, we can see, and I think it's hard to argue, that the sharp spike of chaos or unruliness came to of a culmination right after the 2016 election. I mean, why would such a candidate like Donald Trump cause such a stir with both left and right thinking ideologies, both good and bad? It's, it's as if the majority opposing political parties and those who identify with each became charged 
and it caused a mad dash further away from the commonalities and more toward the direction they lean, causing the divide between the people of this country to become a great chasm. From casual observance, it shouldn't be a stretch, one can witness that individuals from each side seem to be cast under some spell. If one is operating in the name of Jesus, then I would think that you would be protected from becoming, or at least coming under the influence from witchcraft. And for the right, Donald Trump is the great Cyrus from Scripture and protector of Israel. For the left, he's the devil incarnate. Both sides, though, without thought, reacting as if being guided. I mean, what spell would do that? Looking into and leaning into the how various forms and images, whether moving or not, and just how influential they can be, I came upon a term that was new to me called meme magic. Well, reading about meme magic, well, first you have to know what a meme is. A meme is an image on the internet, usually with text written on it, geared to make people laugh or just feel a certain way emotionally. Well, a few years ago, a meme became synonymous with hatred and bigotry. It was a simple picture of a cartoon frog named Pepe. The origins seemed to come from the website 4chan. It was a joke as a wish-granting meme. One of the popular wishes was then candidate Donald Trump to become the president. In effect, this meme became synonymous with Donald Trump's political incorrectness that's been touted by one side of the aisle as racist and bigoted. Interesting to note, though, is when Donald Trump was running for president, one of the things he was known as was causing chaos to the established order dubbing him the chaos candidate. Interesting, uh, one of the creeds of the Freemasons, out of chaos order. There's also an eerie similarity between Pepe and an ancient Egyptian deity known as Kek, a god of chaos that bears the image of a frog. Again, images are powerful tools used by the occult to induce a response. Enough forced imagery can induce a conditioned response. A larger scale, comparable form of this, if you will, magic, is called an egregore. What is an egregore? It's an occult concept representing a thought form or collective group mind. An autonomous psychic entity made up of and influencing the thoughts of a group of people. Egregore comes from the Greek word egregoi, which, when this Greek word is translated into English, is translated as watcher. Interesting. And it may seem that I've gone far off from talking about riots and social unrest of, you know, all the people in the world, and I know that there's people out there who march for justice, Right in the wake of wrongdoing. Some march for life, some protest for freedom because essential human rights are taken away. But we have to look at the root cause of the issue, right? There's a reason for injustice by people in charge. There's a reason that innocent life is taken. There's a reason human rights are taken away. Not only are the reasons being, well, because things which proceed from the heart are wicked, it's that if our heart is not transformed, in the hearts of others, and the hearts of those in charge, if we're not given a new heart that has the word of God written upon it, a new heart that beats inside a new creation, a new creature that has new purpose and thoughts and actions, if we don't have this, then no matter, it doesn't matter what law is passed, it doesn't matter who's elected, it doesn't matter what new legislation is proposed or how hard one fights for freedom and inequality. I mean, these things are, are, are good, but it's like slaying the head of the hydra. You cut one head off, two pop up in its place. The great dragon, right? The leviathan, Satan, 
is the root cause and the lies and manipulation that is told from his mouth through his puppets. They're sowing seeds of destruction in hopes to cause even the very elect to take their eyes off the kingdom of heaven. He wants to take our eyes off the kingdom of heaven and get our minds off of the mission, off of being ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. He wants us to become distracted by fighting these battles in the flesh with earthly weapons and by human means. But we know it is not flesh and blood that we war against, but principalities and rulers of the cosmic powers of darkness in the heavenly realms. If anything, we should know and learn as we look around and about us, these signs and times and everything going on, yes, we should rejoice. It should cause us to be ready, willing, and able to act on our faith. That's simply taking a step in the direction that Jesus has told us to go. Taking a step on the narrow path that he's laid out before us. It should be no great revelation that what's going on in the world, that's what's going on in this country, your country, whatever country you're in, that there is a watcher at the helm pulling the strings. Yes, there's people living in glass castles, people living in their mansions, making their living off the backs of the poor. They seem like the rulers. They seem like the oppressors. But the real ones are spiritual. See, we are not slaves to any man or any system of this world. We're slaves of Christ. We look around and we can see who the real slaves are. Slaves to the system, slaves of the darkness, slaves of the egregore, slaves of the watchers. Whom do we belong to? Who do you belong to? Are we allowing ourselves to be influenced by the images of the egregore, by the puppets of the watchers? those things that hide in the dark, those things that recoil in fear and terror for the light that should reside in each and every one of us if we haven't put a basket over the candlelight that resides in us. With each step we take in our life in Christ, the light burns brighter, shines brighter, revealing those things hidden in the dark. Each page of the Bible that gets read each knee that goes down in prayer, each time we say something out loud for the name of the gospel, that light shines brighter. And as we walk in the darkness, shining that light, the only thing we should fear is the fear of the Lord. The only thing that we should carry with us, the only weapons that we should carry with us is the sword, which is the word of God that pierces down to the joint and marrow, to the very soul. The word of God is true power. As we walk through this world, are we carrying these things with us? Are we letting ourselves be open to the influence, flooded with the images, and being swayed by the arguments of a left and right paradigm? Our real home is the kingdom of heaven. These people that think they are oppressing you, these people that think they are influencing you and causing the shift and everything like that, they're mere puppets in a grand cosmic chess game. But in this chess game, if we are on Team Jesus, then each of us is a royal piece. Again, everything happening isn't a surprise to the one in charge. And... If we are truly following him, then we won't be under the spell of the Watcher. We won't be on the side of the left or the right. We won't be animals who just react.
be that new creature, that new creation in Christ, and shine that light in this dark world. It needs it more now than it did a day ago. This has been Wade. This was a special episode of Out of the Darkness Ministry. Grace and peace.